Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Daniel aka Hashtips and welcome back to the continuation of the Solidity series. I'm really excited to by now know that you guys have followed along and know a lot of the Solidity programming language concepts. Something that we do need to discuss that's very important is how do we handle errors and checks in Solidity? Go ahead and create a myerrorsandchecks.sol file, give this file a license, a pragma line, create the contract and put in a function like this. I'm going to go ahead and explain the three different types that we get when we do Solidity checks to validate data before execution takes place. We get require, revert and assert. Let me explain what require is. So, whenever you have a require statement inside a function, this function is a pure function that exists from the previous tutorial and we're just going to adapt it. You usually use require statements inside functions or any if statements or whatever you want to do to do certain checks. A require statement always needs to pass and if it doesn't, it will fail. How you can define a require statement like, is like this. So you say the word require, then open the brackets, and then you can end the statement. Require takes two parameters, um, and then what you can do with the first parameter is give it the condition that always needs to pass. So let's say our condition, for instance, is that our x should always be greater than our y. We can say that we want the x to always be greater than y. We never want x to be less than y and only if this is true then the rest of the code will execute. If not, it will fail. Now you can have an optional second parameter in require and that is a message to the user or to the developer on letting them know why this failed. We can now say that if this fails, what is the message going to be? Because at this point, if X is now not greater than Y, what is the message going to be? So we can say that um, X is bigger than Y. All right. And that's our reason, for example. And you can do any conditional statements in here. It can be big. It can check data from the storage variables. Anything you really want to check before execution takes place. Let's go and execute this and see what will happen. Take a note that if a require statement fails over here, it will cancel the execution, um, return the function, stop execution, and then it will not carry on. So let's go and execute it. So let's go and deploy the smart contract, my errors and checks. And here's the function. Now I want you to observe that here at the bottom we have our console. So I'm going to put in place. I'm going to put in, let's clear the console here. So long. I'm going to put two and my second variable is going to be four. This should be fine according to our, well, other way around so x should x this one should be less than y sorry so x should always be less than y so use the less than sign and if it fails we're going to say well x was actually bigger than y okay so we want to use that so let's redeploy this and let's call the function so let's call two and four when we execute this, we can see that 2 gets added to 4 and returns to a 6. We can put in 5 and 10, separated by a comma, or you can open this function over here and declare it um, in two separate variables. But if we call it, you can see it's 15. What will happen if we swap these values around or if the x is greater than y? Let's create 7 and let's make y 4. If we call this, you can see that it didn't return any value that was successful. This was just the previous value. But there on the console, we can see that it called a revert. 
Reverting a function means it stops execution, it stops taking gas, and it will just revert and stop the execution uh, as a whole for that function. We can see that the reason why this failed was because x is bigger than y. And that is the reason. And that's why it's sometimes important to give proper reasons um, on your require statements. The other way of checking for errors is called reverting something. So what is a revert statement? Well, here we have a require statement. So let's go and duplicate this function and let's call it a revert example or something just so that I can show you how it basically works. So I'm going to call this my pure revert and this will just um, be renamed so that it has a different name and we don't run into errors. There's our require statement and a require statement can optionally take two parameters. The first one is uh, necessary because it does the check and based on that check it will fail and the second one is the option, remember? Now we get the revert statement. How do we implement that? Well, let's say this is a big function and we don't really want to base it on one piece of logic and then we revert whatever is happening. So let's just create a um, comment over here and say that in here, if there's a lot of logic, logic happening over there, and it carries on, it carries on. And at some point, we want to return this. But now, we only want to return it based on an if statement. And if this is not true, then we need to fail this. So let's say, for instance, our if statement will look like this. Remember our if statements with our conditionals inside the brackets? We can now say, well, purely fail this if x is equal to 10, for example. If x is equal to 10, we hate the number 10. We don't want x to be 10, so we want to revert this and immediately stop execution. Um, and it, it, it um, performs kind of the same as require, whereas require gives the, um, the one line statement and then why it failed. So you can probably do it with the require as well. Reverts can be used in different scenarios where you have intricate code and you want to revert on specific um, use cases. Okay, so inside this if statement, now we can say, well, let's revert this because we never wanted this person to put in a 10. And let's just say that x is 10, right? And that's our reason for reverting. So let's run this function now and let's check it out. Let's go and redeploy and let's go into it. And there we have our revert pure function. Now, this will allow us to kind of say um, 5 and let's put in a 10 over there for y it will work it's 15 let's increment y to 12 it's 17 but what happens if x is 10 it breaks and the reason for that is because it reverted because x is 10 and we never wanted it to be 10 for example that is a revert the last one we have to look at is assert the last way of checking errors in Solidity is something called assert. Now, asserts should never really be used just lightly because asserts will break execution if, it's, if it doesn't pass. I will show you how to use asserts, but it's up to you to do more information on where you want to use asserts. As a Solidity developer, you'll be fine just by using require statements and revert statements to check your logic. Asserts are mainly used to check internal logic of functions, and I'll explain it to you here. Let's go and create a variable and call it max amount. We're going to give this max amount a maximum amount of a hundred. We then want to create a function down here that kind of goes and updates this amount just to check uh, what will happen to our assert value. So I'm going to say update max. And this update max is going to be a function which is public and we're going to update this max amount so we're going to update it to maybe let's say 50 a hard-coded value next let's go and create a function that will do our assertion for us so we can say function check uh, check max 
And this check max is going to be of type internal, not type, but scope of internal, because I really only want to call this inside of my smart contract. Now the internal function is going to do a check. And here we can put the assert value, the assert keyword, and then give it a condition. Our condition would be that if the max amount is not 100, meaning that it will break, um, the smart contract should stop working for that particular function. So we need to make sure that our max amount is always equal to 100, and that's all you need. Once you've done that, we can turn this also into a view function because we're not changing any data on the blockchain and on the smart contract. Then we can go and check the max inside. Let's call it this, this peer function. We're not going to make it a peer function anymore because it's now going to refer to things on si inside this uh, smart contract. So we're going to check for the max over here. This will in turn call this smart contract and wants to check if this is indeed a hundred. We need to turn this function into a view function now and there we go. Everything is set up to do its checks. I'm going to lastly make this public this max amount just to show you how it works. If we go to the deploy section and we deploy this smart contract, so let's go ahead and deploy it, we will see that we have all of our functions. Now my function should work as normal because our max amount is indeed a hundred if we check it. If we go and say we want to add three to five, we call it it's eight. But what happens if we call update max and this function will call and then turn our max value into 50. Let's call that function and check our max value and we can see that it's now 50. If we now call the same function, it will break the execution because it will enter in here. It will pass our require statement because 3 is less than 5 and then it will do our ultimate check to make sure that this is 100. If I call this, you can see down here in the console that this execution did stop and it did um, stop the execution and also broke and returned. So that is basically how you use assert. Please make sure to use assert only on specific um, occasions and read up more on that because that can really hurt a smart contract if it's used wrong. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this small video about a little bit of functions and um, the way we deal with errors. In the next video, we will be discussing going further down the list, going to show you how modifiers work, events, constructors, inheritance. So stick around for that.